Welcome to the Everywhere Workplace podcast, an in-depth conversation featuring the voices shaping the Everywhere Workplace. On each episode, you'll learn the important role technology plays in the evolving remote work environment. You'll hear from the best minds in the industry discuss the future of work and how companies can value trust, deliver better employee experiences, and provide smarter IT connections, regardless of geographic location. So let's get started. My name is Jamie Whalen. I'm the host. And today with me, I have a special guest, Mr. Steve Brazen. He's the Research Director at Enterprise Management Associates. Welcome, Steve, to the podcast. We're so excited to have you here. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. It's a pleasure to be here talking about my favorite topic. (laughs) <laughs> I know you do love this stuff. I, do. We had, I, I I met with Steve a few weeks ago um, and he's just such a joy to work with. So Steve, I'm so excited to have you on again. So thank you so much for being here. Um, I always kind of like to start the show off a little bit fun, right? Since this uh, is the Everywhere Workplace podcast. Steve, where are you coming from? Where where are you at? Where is your Everywhere Workplace today? I, I actually work from out of my home office these days. I uh, kind of you know, after the after COVID, I, I sort of rolled into the working work from home and uh, full time working from home now. Um, honestly, I love it. And, and uh, we still meet occasionally with uh, my colleagues uh, just to make sure we keep up, go out for lunch and things like that. But uh, we're all working from working remotely now. It's everything's changed. Wonderful. Uh, is this, you don't have to tell our location. It can be like a sky area or anything like oh, that. No, I, 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 you know, we're, we're all located in the Colorado <laughs> area, right? So I, I live oh, uh, in the suburbs of Denver. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So just a little context, right? Um, I think it's important to state kind of what we're going to talk about today, right, Steve? You know, we did this really great thing um, called the Digital Employee Experience Report. Uh, I had a couple of goals, right? It was really, you know, kind of to kind of understand where we are for that digital employee experience. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, written working with the global IT, you know, Dex and future of work experts and influencers along with primary third-party research and along with Avanti's insight to highlight kind of the evolution taking place and how employee experience technology in the ever workplace and their satisfaction with their experience has really changed, right? Yes. Um, we had over 10,000 individuals. We had a lot of countries that we surveyed, including the U.S. and the U.K., France, Germany. Um, you know, we found a couple different, obviously, key findings and a ton that were really, really important to us. So, mm-hmm. you know, we really kind of wanted to highlight some of the core things here with you today um, and how important it is and, and what is the digital employee experience and why we should be um, really so interested in it. So to start this off, Steve, I really want to know, you know, what positive impact do you feel that the, you know, the, the DEX report, the employee experience report has on IT today and IT security, really? I, I, IT security, that's, um, I think that's a really great place to start um, because security is often overlooked when it comes to DEX. Uh, digital experience management tends to focus on the user experiences with using the devices, and applications and tools. And, and that's important stuff, no, no, no doubt. But when we've conducted surveys in this area, we found that the biggest challenge users have is circumnavigating security controls um, or, or doing a dance around the security controls. I should say not circumnavigating, but, but actually trying to work with the security controls and, and uh, not impacting their uh, workforce productivity. Um, user experiences and security are typically considered diametrically opposed forces. In other words, most people think that as you increase one, you decrease the other. You increase the user experiences, you decrease the security. You increase the security, you decrease the user experiences. But here's the interesting thing. Our research shows that when users are presented with uh, security practices that are less impactful to the performance of their job tasks, the average number of security breaches actually decreases, not increases. Uh, so uh, that's, good. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, these include things like malware infections, phishing attacks, and compromised user accounts. It turns out the two, um, the, the, the two security and user experiences are actually very closely aligned. As you improve user experiences when using security practices, you proportionally improve security effectiveness. Sounds odd when you first think about it, but then think about it a little bit more. Think about your own practices when using digital technology. Um, and it really becomes rather obvious. When users are required to perform cumbersome, high friction tasks to access and use the resources they require to perform job activities, they are much more likely to find ways to bypass your company's security to make things easier for themselves. 
For instance, um, they may share credentials with peers, which is a very bad thing to do. They may, may disable security processes, or they may utilize uh, unsecured public resources like using G Suite or Dropbox rather than secured company resources just because they're easier and quicker to use. And, um, you know, you, you can kind of point the finger, often point the finger at the users and say, well, they're not following proper security practices. But ultimately, that's not their job. Their job is to complete their job tasks. It's, it's IT management's job to ensure security, right? It's, it's IT security's job to ensure IT security. Um, they're the ones who need to focus on it. You shouldn't be pushing that onto the end user to jump through hoops in order to do the job that they're actually paid to do. So um, big surprise here, when you actually give workers security tools that they don't mind using, they actually use them. And that's what improves security effectiveness. Great. And when we think about, you know, you know, DAX and security correlation, right, um, and all of that and the most common frustrations, you know, all of that, do you, do you feel that embedding security in the InDesign for hybrid workforce is something we should do or we shouldn't do? Oh, it's it's absolutely something that we should do. And I don't think it's being done enough, quite frankly. Um, I, and I, I think that, um, uh, you know, most most organizations see security as a separate issue. But when you look at security itself, the, the core foundations for security, it's really talking about um, enabling uh, enabling employees to utilize the IT resources. So the two are not disassociated, they are actually trying to solve the same problem. If security is really all you're interested in, turn your computers off, you're done, right? That's all you need to do, turn your computers <laughs> off, right? The idea is to allow users to actually utilize the IT services and security is there to enable that. And so digital experiences is, is an, sort of an extension of that. It's just taking it from a different perspective. The two for me are directly aligned with each other and it's finding ways in, in order to maximize your security effectiveness without imposing heavy handed restrictions on the user activities. I like that. I, I actually think we should uh, definitely make that as one of our quotes, you know, when we kind of go further. But I love that you make it so simple, right? Um, can you repeat that line one more time? I just want to make sure that the listeners heard that because to me, that was probably my favorite part so far. Security should be easy to use. It, it should not be impactful to the end user experiences. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know, so the next question kind of come along, right? How does IT ops impact, you know, DAX and, and how DAX impacts IT ops? You know, how can you, can you explain a little bit on that? Go into a little bit of detail. Yeah. Uh, well, to begin, I think it's important to recognize that um, uh, a lack of security is in itself uh, impactful to user productivity, right? I think that's an important recognition here. Account breach breaches and malware infections significantly degrade the performance of devices, services, applications, and networks. And some of the more nastier attacks like ransomware can actually completely disable access to these resources. So security is essential to improving user experiences. However, it's something of a double-edged sword as security processes can reduce user productivity. Now, according to our research, the, um, the most impactful security processes um, uh, uh, is, is actually high friction authentications. That's, that's the one that uh, impacts the users uh, most frequently. On average, according to our research, business workers authenticate eight times each day on average uh, in order to access business IT services. Now, this can significantly slow down or detract workers from uh, performing tasks. Uh, high friction password management processes, such as requiring frequent password resets or memorizing complex password strings can also deter their job performance. Now, additionally, what are now common requirements for adding a second factor of authentication um, have also served to increase the number of steps a user must perform to access business resources. Um, the install another area where security is sort of impacting these uh, end user uh, user experiences is um, the installation of security patches. Uh, we've likely all had this experience at one point or another um, where we're actively working on a critical project when your system suddenly pops up a, a message saying it's going to reboot to complete a patch installation 
What? Right? It's, it's panic time. Not only does this disrupt the flow of your work, but it can actually, you can actually lose progress on your files if you were working on something that was not correctly saved. Um, another one that uh, is a common impact to end user experiences from the security aspect is um, uh, the performance of malware scans. Virus detectors and malware prevention solutions can significantly slow down endpoint device performance during scans which can be very frustrating to users. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've been in both of those situations. I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of times I think we all go, no, no, next time, next time, until I think your computer just tells you it's time. Um, but I think you're right. There's so many, you know, programs that are, you know, based on the cloud now, yeah. right? It's so relevant. And, you know, within cloud, and I have a lot of friends who use different programs, you know, types of, you know, BIM and cloud and all these different types of things that are connected, right? Right if it doesn't save at the right time or something like that does happen, all this work is, you know, missed and um, it can be a big disruptor. And I think, you know, people have been working on it for hours and hours and that happens. I think we can all have that empathy, right? It's Steve, happened of, all you know, of that At some point or another, <laughs> if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will. Yes. I mean, this is just, it's just, it is yeah. part of, uh, you know, the IT experience. Um, but fortunately there are things that can be done to uh, reduce those kinds of impacts security places on uh, on user experiences. Yeah, but I mean, we, we've all felt it. I mean, we've all been yep. there. So it's something that we can kind of all relate to, which is, is also kind of nice, right? Um, you know, I think there's something else to write. Um, we kind of talk about just the role of automation, right? And AI and ML and improving, you know, the DAX, right? Um, you know, using technology to monitor the DAX. So how can we monitor and evaluate DAX, the digital employee experience? Like, how can we actually do that? Can you can you explain to me how that's possible? Yeah, I think that's another great, it's a great question because uh, quantifying a user's experience is not a straightforward process, right? I mean, you, how do you apply a number to that? And when you start thinking about it, there are so many different aspects to a user's experience that it's, it's kind of difficult to quantify, but that's the goal, right? I mean, that's, that's what you really want to do. And, but it requires the collection of both objective and subjective information. Now, objective information is data collected on the configuration and performance of devices, applications, and networks. So you would be looking at things like active processes, CPU and memory utilization, disk IO, network packets, uh, drops, and so forth. Uh, this information um, must be monitored and collected in real time to identify any performance degradation. Now, it should also be historically okay. trended so conditions can be correlated against, uh, you know, against actions and events. But that's the objective data. And it's called objective data because those metrics are consistent across, you know, all devices and all environments. However, it's important to okay. recognize that individual users utilize technology in very different ways. And users have very diverse skill sets when it comes to interacting with technology. A task that's easy for one user may be very difficult to perform by another user. Now to address these differences, you have to collect their subjective experiences. And now this is done by conducting user sentiment surveys to determine their preferences and uh, level of satisfaction with offered IT services. Naturally, the collection of both objective and subjective data is going to result in a very large data set that would be impossible for an administrator to fully evaluate in a reasonable period of time. Now, this is where those intelligence technologies you mentioned uh, really come into play, such as machine learning and analytics. Uh, they, they correlate events and conditions and user perspectives in order to identify problems and opportunities for users to experience uh, to enable experience improvements. Um, intelligence technologies like those also um, enable uh, uh, organizations to establish a digital experience score. So basically you're looking at both objective and subjective information and you're determining um, what that user experience is and you can apply a number to it. Now that's important because it becomes a standard metric that you can use to gauge the uh, success of your uh, DEX implementation. Uh, and you could actually tie that to uh, an SLA or an XLA. We're coming up with these XLAs now, uh, experience level agreements instead of service level agreements. Um, but you can tie it to directly to that number. You want to see a certain improvement to the overall average digital experience score, that kind of thing. So digital experience scores can be very valuable for a uh, metric for service management. 
Wonderful. And, and thank you for describing it in the, the, the kind of different ways. I think not everyone understands how many deep areas there are um, and levels. So I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, something else I'm kind of thinking about, right? Uh, you know, the kind of automation of IT ops and IT support, right? Yeah. What can organizations do to improve IT operations and IT support to positively impact that digital employee experience? Well, as I mentioned, objective and subjective monitoring is definitely the first step, right? You can't fix a problem if you don't know about it. And that's your visibility. That's how it's going to identify the problem. Following that, um, you're right, it's automation. Automated remediation steps should be implemented, uh, implemented to rapidly resolve issues before they impact user productivity. Uh, automated remedi remediation enables proactive uh, management of digital experiences rather than reactive management of digital experiences. And any repeatable process can be automated and automations can operate autonomously or at the direction of administrator. Now, what I mean by that, for instance, a script may be created to, I don't know, let's say reset a hanging or looping process, right? This can uh, sure. uh, automatically be executed if that condition is detected. Or a message could be sent to an administrator who can manually execute the script, pushes a button and it fixes the problem. If you want the administrator to step in there and evaluate, you can have that as part of the automation process. But the idea is that the actual process for fixing it is automated so you can have rapid, uh, um, rapid resolution to the problem. While organizations can certainly manually build scripts, um, Adopting a DEX solution with pre-built automations ensures that they are actually reliable and supported. So um, I always recommended uh, a DEX solution with a large number of pre-built automations uh, as being advantageous. It's, it's just easier to implement and you know that they're supported. You don't have to debug uh, things over time. You know, you have, uh, you know, Fred in IT who wrote all these scripts and he suddenly leaves and now nobody knows how to manage these environments. Right. So <laughs> it, it's much it's much better to have a deck solution that has the vast majority of the automated scripts pre-built for you. Perfect. And then, you know, kind of to round that out, that, that question, you know, what um, what about IT security? What technology or solutions can we use to be more proactive in our security measures and improve the you know digital employee experience? Yeah, and I think this is really where intelligence technologies can play a uh, uh, a, a pretty significant role, uh, certainly in relation to uh, security. It's just because there's just so much a vast amount of contextual information you need to collect to make decisions. And I talked um, so, uh, for example, um, uh, you know, with uh, I, I talked a little bit about um, adaptive authentication, adaptive authentication, you, you authenticate and users based on the level of risk uh, that you determine yeah. and the, the uh, machine learning or, uh, or, or um, analytics platform would actually determine the level of risk. Um, but that can be actually taken a, a step further by enabling continuous risk monitoring. Uh, it's kind of like the old okay. expression, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Well, in this case, it's, <laughs> well, if security risks are low, why impose high security, high friction security on the user activities, right? By continuously right. monitoring yeah. and intelligently analyzing risk levels, policies can be created to only impose security controls when they are actually required. And this reduces the impact on users while still achieving security goals. And that, that can only be done in real time using uh, those kinds of intelligence technologies. Perfect. And I know I know we kind of we talked a little bit about it, but I just want to go back to to kind of how IT, you know, ops impacts, you know, the digital employee experience and so forth. Right. I know we covered it a little bit, but I just have a few more sure. questions. And I'm sorry, we're kind of going back in reverse a little no bit. Problem. But, um, you know, I want to see, you know, does the increase of devices used for work by hybrid employees impact IT support? And if so, how does that affect the digital employee experience? I know you talked a little bit about it. Yeah. I know you kind of went into this other area because I was, you know, really excited about the other part. But I really do want to just talk about that hybrid role because that is kind of that everyday, yep. you know, problem that people are experiencing. So I'd really love to understand from your perspective um, a little bit more details on that. Yeah, there's a lot to cover there. And I'm glad you're bringing this up. I think we have to start with understanding that the foundation of traditional IT management or what we used to call client lifecycle management relies on the establishment of device and configuration standards across the enterprise. That That's the way things used okay. to work, right? Um, those an antiquated approaches are no longer sustainable. Uh, modern day workers 
uh, as we've been discussing, re- rely on a variety of different so, devices. So me? So am, am I the modern day worker? <laughs> uh, you, you, we all are. I think we all are. I mean, we we're all, all using yeah. desktops, yeah. laptops, smartphones, and, and some people yeah. tablets, you know, to perform job tasks. And we, you know, a variety of operating systems, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, Chrome. Go back 10, 15 years, everybody was using a window desktop, just about, right? I mean, that was that was yeah. the one business tool. Now everybody's using multiple operating systems, multiple devices. And these dis- these disparate devices are distributed across home, remote, and business environments. In fact, um, our research shows that roughly half of all business tasks are now occurring outside of the physical office. And workers are more frequently using their own personal devices to perform job tasks rather than just business-owned devices. You have your home PC, so now you're using that when you're at home. Faced with these diverse, complex environments, IT operations teams can no longer enforce a standard on workers um, and must be able to adapt to supporting whatever resources the employees uh, find most effectively. Now, these complex distributed environments make it difficult for IT administrators to centrally achieve visibility into all of the devices in their support stack. Administrators simply do not have the time to monitor the performance on every single device individually, right? They just can't be, do it. That, no, that would be crazy. I mean, I just think about, you know, even in times in my, you know, career, I've had, you know, work phone and, you know, now I have my personal phone, but yep. I still do a lot of work on my, you know, and it's so true. I think it happens consistently. And, and how do you actually, um, you know, keep track of that is, is, yeah, is a big it's simple problem, math. I, I mean, the more devices and networks and IT services that are in use in, in your business, the more there is to monitor and the greater the opportunities for things to break down. Right. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty obvious. And that's, what's putting the uh, additional burden on the IT administrators. That is, that is, that is a burden that I don't know if I can handle. I, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> well, let me give you an example of that because I think this is one that's becoming more <laughs> yeah. common with the, with the home worker. Uh, take a scenario where a home worker is accessing business resources using a VPN. And they may also yep. be using cloud hosted services separate from the business. And they, mm-hmm. they uh, submit a ticket to support saying that they're having a slowdown in application performance. Now you're the administrator, right? Is what's the problem? Is it the device? Is it the user's home Wi-Fi? Is it their internet service? Is it the VPN connection? Is it the business or is it the cloud hosted environment, right? You have to narrow that down. There's so many more elements to look at for the remote worker than than in the the traditional environment where everybody's on-premise on the business in a controlled environment. Yeah, I mean, there is that flip side, right? It, it does, you know, does good or bad, you know, do you, you know, does employee experience impact IT operation? And if so, how, right? I mean, you're kind of explaining it, right? In, in a couple of different formats. That's right? exactly I mean, right. And and without a doubt, it does, <laughs> right? The level of yeah. um, visibility and intelligence that are offered by adopted solutions uh, will directly impact the uh, company's ability to improve end user digital experiences in comp- these, comp- these complex digital environments that we're talking about here. Um, now, traditional methods of IT management are reactionary, right? In other words, this is mm-hmm. what I was uh, describing earlier. Administrators respond to problems only after they have occurred and only after the users have actually reported that there's an issue. Uh, additionally, technology fixes that resolve a, a particular problem but do not address the root cause of the problem ensure that the problem okay. will actually occur again, right? This results in what we okay. call the break-fix cycle of reactive firefighting. <laughs> when administrators are constantly battling fires, they never, they never actually get around to putting them out. This is how you end up with those systemic problems consistently plaguing users and diminishing their performance. Organizations that adopt a more proactive approach to IT operations detect and resolve problems and their root causes before users have been impacted. And that's the goal of digital experience management. This requires um, holistic visibility and a targeted approach to problem resolution. Automation also plays a key role in enabling uh, real-time monitoring and those rapid uh, problem remediation tasks we were talking about. Um, yep. But from my perspective, a good DEX approach enables proactive discovery and remediation capabilities that specifically target issues that impact uh, user experiences. 
So at the end of the day, proactive versus reactive, right? That's the that's the, <laughs> the the take of it all, right? Great. Well, see, this has been such a pleasure having you on today. Um, and thank you so much for kind of walking through some of these a little bit more deeper in detail that I don't know if everyone, you know, has that visibility or insight into understanding, right? Where um, you have such great insight and understanding of this. So thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Um, I do have a few more quick questions, though, if you don't mind hanging on. Sure. Um, you know, because this is the every workplace, we talked about good and bad digital employee experiences. We're working everywhere, right? Um, that's why we, you know, kind of came up with this great title for kind of what we're trying to do and and making that every workplace possible, right? And everything that Avanti tries to do every day. We we also think it's funny to think about, you know, some crazy things about the ever workplace, right? Sure. And one of them to me is, uh, well, two of my favorite questions here. The first is, where is your dream ever workplace? If you could work anywhere, right? Because now we can um, in a safe, you know, collected environment, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, where would that be, Steve? Oh, what a great question. I, You know, I'd have to say Alaska. I, I've fallen in love with the state. And uh, if I had a dream, right, it would be to live in Alaska in the wintertime, and oh, excuse me, in the summertime, and then come back to Colorado in the wintertime. That would be the ideal work conditions. Of course, being able to work remotely from either location, that, that would be it. Well, now you can, right? We all can, right? <laughs> That's the best That's exactly part right. So maybe Exactly right. You gotta put it on your bucket list. I gotta get over there. But yep. um, and then last it's question. It's beautiful, you should go. And then, I, yep. so what time of year should I go? Is there a certain time of year? You said the summer? I uh, fall. Yeah, go go in oh, okay. July, August time frame. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Last question. Craziest work ever or workplace you've ever had to be at? Where where is the craziest? The craziest workplace I ever worked at. So <clears throat> I worked in a lot of crazy <laughs> places, I have to say. So I, I've had a lot of experiences <laughs> there. But I have to go all the way back to uh the start of my career when I worked at a company called Unix International. And we defined the standards for the Unix operating system. This is, this is, I'm dating myself now. This is the early 90s. And we defined the standards for the Unix operating system. Now, it was a small standards organization, small standards body. Um, but uh, it was a great opportunity to learn. And I learned so much. I was able to touch so many different things uh, within the IT industry. Uh, but, of course, the downside to it was that you have to you, you, you get to do everything, but you have to do everything, right? Because there's not a lot of support uh, mechanisms in a small organization like that. This is the early days of the internet. So learning how to uh, uh, set up internet routers, you know, and, and um, mail routers and things like that, because it, it, it takes you back. That I would have to say that was probably the crazy ex experience. I, I uh, you know, I think fondly back to those days. Wonderful. Yeah. I mean, there are some crazy spaces. I think, you know, I've got, I've got, you know, a couple of kids and a dog and lots of craziness in my workplace. Right. So, you know, consistently I've had to find different areas like my laundry room or different areas, you know, that are crazy, but you know, it works for me. Yeah. Um, and it allows me to kind of have my ever workplace anywhere. So, uh, it's kind of a crazy thing, but, but a great thing at the same time. So again, Steve, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I hope we have you on again. You were just such a delight. Um, and if anyone it was um, a pleasure has to read be here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Steve is kind of a celebrity. He is in the report. So um, feel free to check out, you know, the Dex report and obviously, um, you know, anything that you guys see and obviously what's out there. But Steve, again, it's been a pleasure. We hope to have you back again. Um, you know, this is a fun podcast. So we hope you'll come back and, and be with us. And, you know, again, thank you all out there for listening to today's episode of the Everywhere Workplace podcast, which is a program of Avanti. Make sure to visit our website at avanti.com where you can follow the show on your favorite podcast platform so you'll never miss an episode. And you can also connect with us on Twitter at Go Avanti. While you're at it, if you are found or you found value in the show, we'd appreciate it if you can leave us a rating or a review and be sure to tune in for the next episode. So thank you again and we will see you next time. I'm Jamie. Have a good one.